All right. Uh, so the build didn't complete eventually. And so we're, we got, got it tagged as latest. And we're going to push it up to ECR. Oh, we can do some testing. I was looking at, uh, at CloudWatch. I, I wasn't really seeing anything that would um, tell me what I was after in terms of ECS activity, unfortunately. Um, maybe this is a, it's a, a thing we can search for. Though. So, ABS uh, Fargate. Um, Memory metrics. So we can monitor ECS using CloudWatch. It claims target usage met matri uh, metrics. Uh, CloudWatch usage metrics visibility. Yeah, uh -huh. Number of uh, specified resources running in your account. Uh, not really, I mean, that's usage me metrics, but that's not what I'm really after. Uh, cluster, but well, we don't have a, a cluster. We don't have an ECS cluster we're using Fargate. Yes, nope. So I don't think so. I don't think that's relevant. Not using Fargate with EKS. Hmm. Container insights. I wonder, I think that might be something I have to turn on. Let's go take a look. So if I go to... Ba, 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 ba. Go back to batch, go to job definitions. This is the batch job definition. And then this is where we're saying, hey, we'll use Fargate. Other other options here. Um, and then containers, default container. That's where we're specifying, specifying PCPUs. Um, and logging. If I were to create a revision. Yeah, here's where you would select EKS or EC2. Um, execution mode. I just hit next to here. Okay. I don't know why Windows is selected. Um, I don't see any options there. What if I go over to ECS? Let's figure this out. Oh, there, so there, there is an ECS cluster, right? For Fargate that's provisioned. Did I explicitly provision that in the, uh, in our Pulumi? Uh, well, let me do this while, while I'm investigating this, figuring what I'm doing, let's rerun the job, um, and have it just use the existing resource settings and make sure everything is working. So what this should do is this will reprocess and re-upload the end results and um, put our new silence detection output in DynamoDB. It should I think it should update the DynamoDB DB record? So uh, or you know we've introduced a bug and it will fail. Yeah, that's also possible. This will take a minute. Um, I mean, as we've seen it, it takes like 15 minutes to actually do the job. That's kind of what I want to just. Um, some of the, the settings of uh, resources allocated. There, we can see a pending task here in this. Uh, what I wanted to check is I didn't really recall provisioning an ECS cluster as part of this, but either I did or it automatically did that as part of provisioning the compute environment. Uh, well, I definitely am not referring to a, uh, what should I call it? Um, a ECS cluster here. So I think, I think that just gets auto provisioned when I say I want a 
peach environment. It's using Fargate. And Brainless says, uh, the dragon is so grindy. I assume you mean in uh, Mind Over Magic. Uh, besides, uh, you know, Alistair's Alistair stream, whatever day that was, <laughs> with the dragon, I have not seen much of it. I, I have not uh, dug into that. Indeed. Okay. So we have this this compute environment. We have metrics. We have a metrics tab. So cluster level metric, uh, cluster level of free metrics are only available for tasks that are hosted on the EC2 instance. So you cluster level metrics for your Fargate tasks. You can use container insights. Okay. So maybe account settings. I can turn container insights on. This I think costs money. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Normally with these things that you can turn on, they give you uh, a big warning that this will cost extra money. Turn on or off. Uh, not defining default settings. Okay. Okay. So if I save that, it's a long process. So I will say, all right. I did see something suggesting that if you if you were interested in trying the new content, maybe this is something you said, or maybe it was in the patch notes. But just like, if you want to see the new content, don't start it over. <laughs> To start a new game, uh, you know, um, start from where you were. Uh, so, yeah, use the old tip. Okay, so I turned that on. I don't know if that's going to have any impact for um, the already running task. I, I guess it's stopped now. It failed. All right, we got a failure. You're on day 200. Everything is ready. I'm like, come on. All right. So, uh, hooray, it failed. Is this even legible on stream? How about there? Failed. I mean, the, the red might give it away. Uh, so, log stream. Let's take a look at that. All right. Um, speech track number missing. Oh, right, right, because I updated this in Pulumi, but I have not um, deployed that. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that's the only fix, right? So let's, let's do this. We'll clone this, this job and we'll add some overrides for environment variables. Um, so we're after these things that we have. Speech track number one. Noise tolerance uh, 0 0.004. And silence duration as in two seconds. Okay, so that's fine. Um, and then we're just going to repeat. Great job. That's, that's a little too zoomed in for me. That's okay. That'll be better. So that'll take a minute to uh, percolate through. I wonder... So now that we have container insights turned on, can we see stuff over here? Hooray! Uh, yes. Sources. Performance monitoring. ECS tasks. Cluster. when this was on a guess. Oh, it's just a different UI. Maybe it would show me stuff there. Um, yeah. Resources. 
not enable insights on your containers. But I have, I thought. Um, refresh this. Yeah, we have one running thing. Yeah, this task. Okay. So this container. That's unknown. And we. So is there? There's a task definition here. We're on number four. something I need to do. So there's a container to find here. Just wondering if there's something I need to turn on somewhere. Hmm. Let's imagine I create a new this. I just want to see the options here. It's very similar to the other UI. Um, we have container. I'm surprised this is not turned on. Uh, resource allocation limits, environment variables, logging. Yep. Container network setting. Start with dependency health check. Tell it about how to do a health check. Uh, monitoring. PCS uh, creates an AWS distro for open telemetry sidecar. That's interesting. Metrics collection. Okay. But I don't see anything about this container insights stuff. Maybe that's something I have to turn on in the cluster. Sorry. Oh, container insights. So how do I turn? So given that I did not specifically provision this cluster in Pulumi, like it just got auto provisioned by choosing Fargate for the compute environment. Ops, replace resource in your state, policy. Interesting. Let me have a definition of this. So we have compute resources, EKS configuration. Definition. Type the desired EC2 configuration. Air. Instance role, instance types, launch template. Um, how would I turn on insight? It's a word that does not occur there. Uh, insight? Nope, no insight. Like me, I have no insight <laughs> into this. Uh, empty policy. Context, environment, service role, state. Tags, type. Mm, that's a mystery. Ah, uh, yet again, I miss the cloud development kit. Well, in the long term, I mean, honestly, in the long term, I might want container insights still turned on. Um, but for right now, it'd be cool just to turn this on just to see it. Uh, of course, I think our, our job, no, our job is still running. There we go. 
So if we go back to CloudWatch, no, I have, here we go, Container Insights. If I were to go here, this may not take effect until we start another job. I have. Yeah. Okay. Well, how's this doing? It's running. Uh, started at 1030. So it's been seven minutes. So previously the jobs were taking like 15 minutes to run. Mm. Uh, I guess another thing I could do, I don't have to wait for this job to complete, right? If I were to go back to here uh, and search, so here's the one that's running right now, uh, a test one. And here is something that was triggered. I just want to make sure that this is using, if you look at job configuration, the key is different than the key of this job. 15th and this one is from the 23rd, right? So these will be like working on separate pieces of data so they won't conflict. I'll clone this job and uh, let's let's run this and we'll give it some additional, some overrides. So we'll change the vCPUs. I guess what do we wanna to try to do first? Like we just increase the amount of memory and keep the amount of CPU the same. Um, or we could increase the amount of CPU, and we might have to increase the memory a little bit, depending on the available options. Um, what to do? I guess what I probably want to do is I want to make a stab at making you know a substantial change to the performance of it. So what do I think? Is it is it memory bound? Is it like surely not? can't it seems unlikely that it would be like I would expect that the, it would I don't know do these containers even have the ability to swap <laughs> like it's a hard limit of memory to present to the container right so presumably where this is not an issue let's just try to increase the CPU what if let's go Okay, maybe not eight, please. I don't want to. How about two? And we need to do that. So if we go from 0.5, we four exit. And the minimum amount of memory we can give it is four gigabytes of two vCPUs. Or we could do more conservatively, we could just like two exit. Um. Does it take half the time? Let's find out. So we should see the starting pretty soon. It's runnable. It's starting, good. All right, so we're not in a situation where like the compute environment is gonna wait for one to do the other. So if I refresh this, this is still running. And it's been running for about 10 minutes. And this one's just started and I'm hoping this one will beat the other one. But we'll see. Uh, I mean, potentially they, they both could fail. Um, if like if it's run this long, it's still possible that um, it hasn't gotten to the part where it's joining all the results together or trying to upload things to DynamoDB. So it's potentially, you know, potentially that could fail. Like that. Uh, interesting, it failed in 30 seconds or less. Why? 
Um, oh, right. Because this is missing the same environment variables. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I, I have to do the same thing on this side to the other. Add environment variables. Uh, okay, so. Try this again. Silence duration. Two. Is that it? I think those are the new ones. Or this we can also do. Okay, so run this. Runnable. Runnable. It's waiting for the cluster to, to pick it up. Yeah, and it's starting. And what about this one? Still running. It succeeded. All right, it took uh, 11 minutes, 11 minutes. And so what we should see for this key in DynamoDB is we should see the new silence detection stuff. All right, so if we query by key, oh no, no, that's, that's filters. We don't want filters. We want to query by this key. We get an item, and there's silence. There are 18 detected silence segments uh, from 22 seconds to 37 seconds, 108 to 110. Interesting. Interesting. Um, that is interesting. What's going on with that? Like when we go into silence detection here, um, duration 30. Presumably that's what I'm doing is duration. 30 actually, not two. I wonder, let's, let's search duration. So the, this environment variable is set to 2.0, but uh, do we actually use that? I mean, we have a config, right? that environment variable, uh, that it's loaded into, but I suspect we don't actually use it. Like we take that from input from the, the front end, right? So, uh, yeah. Let me just start with the maybe TSX files. Uh, let's see. What happens in the front end? Create episode button. Duration field story, duration field exporter, uh, episode creation, edit, episode. Stream silence detection input. So we call this Q stream silence detection and we pass this duration value, which defaults to 30. That's interesting. Uh, where there it is. So we just take that and we send that to the, the backend. Stream uh, silence detection detect. It's just that that payload. Okay, 
this handler here, which takes this body, takes it's a detect input that optionally has a noise and duration. So what do we do with body? Um, here we grab the noise and duration and JSONify it and put it into segment. So noise isn't present, but duration is 30. So what does that do? So that ends up calling detect segment through our task processing system. And then, okay. So here's what it is. Here's where we use the config, right? If we don't have a value being passed in from the front end, we use what's in config. So that means the noise value that we have in the environment variable is correct, but the duration value is not. So the duration value probably should be 30 trying to match what actually happens today uh, instead of two uh, there it should be 30 seconds so we're looking for segments of at least 30 seconds that have a noise threshold of uh, 0.004 something whatever that unit is so anyway, so uh, it it works. It doesn't do exactly what I want, but it works. So we will um, probably rerun this job. Let's uh, let's rerun this job. So this took you know kind of about the same amount of time as it normally does, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, let's rerun this job, and we will um, change this value to 30. But we'll also change the VCPU number. So the other job here is running. This was run with uh, one CPU and two gigs of memory. So what if we go further? What if we do two CPUs and then minimum amount of memory? And we run this. So just trying out different combinations of things. Um, so let's see where this goes. Uh, this this definitely seems like the kind of thing where you could probably make like a, a test harness where you run the same batch job or hmm. I guess technically, because the bulk of the work is kind of, it reads everything in and then does the work and then outputs to the end. You could probably run this on the same input data uh, as multiple jobs, and that would probably not be the worst thing. So you could probably, what could you do? You could enumerate all the different possible combinations of vCPU and memory um, for the container and then run all of those in parallel potentially and just look at how long each one of them took and you put that in a spreadsheet and chart it or you know make a tool whatever something like that this is running uh, and this is running so this one one bcpu and two gigs and this one is two bcpu so it's twice as much resources uh, so what I kind of, well, one, I expect that this, this will complete sooner. Uh, it's one expectation I have, but the question is going to be at what point can we stop if we, if, uh, where, where are diminishing returns, right? Like theoretically, maybe depending on what is actually the slow part of this, um, which is probably going to be CPU, right? It's going to be just churning through the bytes, having FFmpeg like uh, read the video stream and figure out what it's about. Um, it's the slow thing, right? And so we are we're we're reading from S3. So yeah, to be fair, I mean the first part of this is we have to pull the data from S3 and put it spill it onto disk. Um, and that takes time and that's limited by just like network transit. It's not going to be affected by how we're 
what we're tuning here, right? So you can get to a point where the, the part that takes up uh, a significant amount of time is something that's not is invariant to these settings, at which point, you know, it doesn't make sense to throw more, more resources at it, right? We're I'm paying money for this job to run based on like CPU hours effectively, right? How much CPU for how long? So if I can double the amount of CPU and it takes half as much time, then it costs the same amount of money, but it gets done twice as fast. So why wouldn't I do that? Um, but the question is uh, at what point does throwing more resources at it not speed it up? And that's what I want to know. So I'm just kind of informally testing this. So this has been running for about 10 minutes uh, and succeeded. So that's not really a good sign, right? So we, we doubled the amount of CPU and memory and it took the same amount of time. That's interesting. This one has been running for uh, three minutes ish. Okay, so uh, let's see, job configuration here, or sorry, container environment silence duration here was two, so I do want to rerun this with thirty. Um, so we will do that. So we've done half one and two so we'll do four next and the minimum amount of memory is eight gigs we'll change this amount to 30. And we'll run that again Five minutes. This one should just be starting. Yeah. It's the same job, we're just with different settings. Four BCPUs and eight gigs of memory. Uh, we can, of course, we can look at the log stream and see kind of what's going on. So yeah, we can see here's where the job started and it took about a second. No, no, no. It took, uh, what, a couple of hundred milliseconds to uh, get to saving object to file. Is that is that where we start? Is there a log line after that? Yeah, that's, okay, that's where saving, okay, that's where that is. Um, what we probably should do is that, let's add another tracing at the end of that. That's not going to affect anything that's running right now, but that could be helpful in the logs. Um, yeah. So how long does it take to download? <laughs> okay. That might be a significant amount of the time this takes is actually just downloading the object from S3. It is, you know, several gigabytes. So worth considering, in, in which case, um, increasing the amount of resources on, uh, on the container is not gonna do a lot. Okay, so let me select it. Yeah, we have a cluster listing here now. So there's our cluster and our task definition. So what I wanted to see was like performance monitoring. Can we see that? Yeah. Okay. So you can see kind of earlier when we had less um, CPU resources for the job, it was, you know, taking a significant percentage, but now it's not right. So maybe we don't need yeah, we're hardly using any memory. So maybe, <laughs> maybe 
maybe half of half of a vCPU is enough. Uh, in which case, the thing that takes time is just downloading the uh, the bytes from S3, which is unfortunate because there's probably not a lot I can do about that. I think we'll we'll see that bear out if that's the case that all of these jobs will take roughly 10 minutes if that is true um i wonder are there bucket settings that potentially might have an impact here so the archive bucket access point Breaking points that attach to buckets and simple by managing that access and scale last three. Metrics. Beautiful. Number goes up. We have 7.4 terabytes of data in Glacier storage. 1.5 terabyte, uh, terabytes in Glacier instant retrieval storage. 1.2 in standard and frequent access. And then some overhead. Maybe this is double counting because it's migrating things in Glacier. Maybe that's what happened there. 1,925 video files stored in this SP bucket. Okay, yeah, so this job took eight minutes, nine minutes, somewhere around there, slightly faster at two vCPUs and four gigs. And this job is running. Uh, so anyway, so let's, let's take a look though. Like we rerun this with sound saturation at 30. So let's, let's actually look at the data that was produced. I think this is the same key we were looking at before, right? Uh, is, it, is it this one? It is this one. So if I refresh this page, silence, there's nothing in there. <laughs> okay. It's a list. It has nothing in it. That potentially could be true. Like there could be no segments of at least 30 seconds that were silent. That could be true. little bugged. Um, scan. Very good. Yeah, it's empty. Okay, that makes sense. I think. Okay, cool. This is 20 minutes of me talking nonstop. As I do. Um, yeah, and we can see I wonder if we can look at metrics here. General storage utilization. So this is us storing the, the data from S3 locally as we're uh, processing data. Advanced monitoring is not enabled. Okay. So this one has been running for about six minutes. And I'm gonna guess it's gonna be done in about two minutes and doubling the amount of CPU and memory is going to have little to no effect. That is, we are, we are IO, IO bound, not memory or CPU bound. Uh, so what can we do about that? How can this be better? Uh, faster, better is, <laughs> 
a loaded word. So we're doing a lot of things where we're like, uh, let's let's take a step back through here in the code, right? So we, we call download video and we await it, right? So what we're doing is we're grabbing the, we're getting the whole thing from S3 before we do anything else. Uh, potentially, potentially we could have the contents of the video start streaming and being piped to uh, FFmpeg in these different jobs. And so that we would start processing the data as we were downloading it. Um, I don't have metrics yet, but I suspect that a lot of the time here is being spent um, just downloading the file, just doing IO. And then this part probably does not take too long to do. I wonder, do I have, I should like put instrument. Um, that's, that's the key. Uh, tracing instrument on these functions. We don't have like application tracing enabled um, to like uh, x-ray or something. Uh, I, I could probably figure out how to do that at some point, but I just haven't yet. There we go, it completed and it took eight minutes. Look at that, okay. So it seems like we could get some uh, marginal gain by increasing CPU and in memory, but I don't think it's really worth it. Um, and like the idea is that like after a stream, I'll click a button and it will transfer all the video files and it'll do these things and that'll happen like overnight. There's not really a rush. It's fine. Um, so whatever. It, it's good if it, you know, can complete faster, but it doesn't need to. And again, no silence is detected in, in this video. Another 20 minutes of me not stopping what I'm saying for more than 30 seconds. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to commit all of this. We're gonna go find someone to raid and then I'm gonna get some lunch because I am hungry. That, that is not descriptive at all. Uh, add silence detection. Parameters to the container. Properties. Uh, infrastructure code. Yep. All right. And then broadly speaking, what am I doing here? I'm extracting silence detection, adding silence detection to video gesture. Let's see. Nope. Uh, Extract silence detection code and use an uh, video ingester uh, job. Yep. All right, so that's in the PR. Um, and at some point, We'll probably just merge the PR. It's just not really a rush. This is kind of, um, I'm not really using the results of any of this yet. I'm using kind of how the application already works, but at some point we'll get this all uh, tied into the workflow. So, uh, thanks so much for coming out to the stream today. Uh, it's great to have some company uh, as I work on this project. It has been the thing that I have been working on for the 
uh, uh, majority of the year. And uh, let's go find someone right.